Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel alive. I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. At UBNRadio.com. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Rebel Hearts with Christy Reeves. I am so excited you're joining us today. And as you know, Rebel Hearts is all about conversations with change makers, paradigm shifters, people who push the human consciousness in order to create a better tomorrow. And we're here to empower the rebels of the world and inspire you to become the change that you want to see in the world. And I'm so excited about today's guest because he's a fellow vegan and he's out there illuminating what is being done to our animals, giving a voice to the voiceless. And let me tell you a little bit more about him before we bring him on camera. James Aspie is a man on a mission. He believes the majority of people in the world are participating in unnecessarily and easily avoidable violence every time they purchase animal products. He's most well known for taking a year-long vow of silence to raise awareness for animals, and he cycled 5,000 kilometers across Australia. He also got tattooed for 25 hours to raise money for charity and has reached tens of millions of people through his online speeches. And I am so honored and so excited to welcome James on today's episode of Rebel Hearts. Hey, James, welcome. <laughs> I'm How's so good. I'm good. Thank you for being here with us today. How are you? My pleasure. I'm very well, thank you. Excited to have a conversation. Thank you, my fellow vegan. I actually want to start at the point when you weren't a vegan. And mm. I think it was about 10 years ago that you were being diagnosed with cancer. And I feel like, you know, a lot of our Rebel Hearts community is seeing what, what we're doing right now. And I like to always share, start with sharing the hero's journey, kind of sharing how you got to where you are right now, because it feels like that's an inspiration to see, hey, this person found his mission, his path because of X, Y, Z. And for mm. me, like being diagnosed with cancer, it's like such a traumatic situation and it actually ended up pushing you eventually onto that journey and onto the mission that you are right on right now. So tell us a little bit what happened, what was going on with that diagnosis, what was the journey you went into because of that? Okay, I was diagnosed with leukemia and lymphoma when I was 17 years old. I was given a very small chance of living and I put uh, I put a lot of, they put a lot of strong chemotherapy drugs into my body. Mm -hmm. I, I put on about 50 pounds during that time. I suffered a lot during that time. I nearly died a few times mm -hmm. and it was just a really intense experience for a 17 year old, as you can imagine. And then that experience though got me into personal training because somebody who helped me lose the 50 pounds really inspired me to do the same to help others out of their suffering too. Mm -hmm. So I became a personal trainer for the next seven or so years and I ended up working on a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. And on the cruise ship is where I met somebody who told me that eating animals is bad karma. Yeah, now, I'd always thought we needed to eat animals to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So I said to him I, the same thing I told all the clients that I'd met over the years who wanted me to put them on a vegetarian meal plan. I said, there's no such thing as a healthy vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And this man said, I've been vegetarian for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking this dude should probably be dead or something. But, you know, he, yeah, was a smart, yeah. he was a very smart man, actually. So I decided maybe I would just try being vegetarian for a week, see if I noticed any benefits for myself. I didn't mm -hmm. care at all about the animals, literally not at all. In fact, compared to most people, I would say I had less respect or consideration for mm. animals than the vast majority of people that I knew. And I went vegetarian for a week. I felt better in just a few days. I noticed I felt really good, actually, especially after meals. There's a big difference and just a general elevated sense of well-being and high energy levels and deeper sleep. And basically, I just noticed, wow, I actually mm -hmm. feel better not eating meat. And I used to eat a lot of meat, every single meal, big stack. If I didn't have <laughs> meat on my plate, I didn't even feel like I was eating a meal. Uh -huh. I just wasn't. You know, meat was predominantly what I ate in my diet. Mm -hmm. And I tried going vegetarian, did it for a week, felt good, started researching into it, 
stuck with it for all the health benefits because I learned that not only can you be healthy without eating animal products, but you're likely to be much healthier. You're going to mm-hmm. live a longer mm-hmm. life. You're going to reduce your chances of the biggest killer yeah. that we're plagued with today, which is heart disease. In mm-hmm. fact, the only diet proven to reverse mm-hmm. the biggest killer in the majority of patients is a diet free from all animal products, a plant-based diet. And, you know, the benefits of reducing your chances of cancers, which I obviously cared a lot about, and diabetes mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and osteoporosis and obese, obesity and so many different illnesses. Yeah. So I got intrigued for the health benefits. Then soon later, I watched a documentary called Earthlings, which shows all the ways that humans mutilate and torture and mm-hmm. kill animals, mm-hmm. murder animals mm-hmm. for foods and clothing that not only we don't need, but we're better off without. Yeah. And once I saw that, I thought, okay, I've learned now that we can live and thrive without killing animals. Mm-hmm before watching slaughterhouse footage didn't phase me yeah why would it phase me because that's what has to happen to survive Mm -hmm. but when i realized we didn't need to do it for our survival Mm -hmm. i asked myself the question okay it's not for our health so what do we do this to these animals for yeah yeah and i looked very hard for an answer and when i realized the best justifications we've got for abusing and murdering over one billion sentient beings Mm -hmm. every single week Mm -hmm. is they taste good because we like how they taste because it's a habit we're in because it's a tradition and because it's convenient and yeah. none of those reasons come anywhere near close to a justification and an adequate justification for a single screen that you hear when you watch the documentary earthlings or any of the screens happening inside these death factories yeah. that we've created these slaughterhouses right now yeah. So I decided, right, I need to get serious about this. This isn't just about health. This is about the victims of these choices. This is about these sentient beings. Mm-hmm. And when I learned that there's at least as much cruelty in dairy and eggs and mm-hmm. all animal products mm-hmm. as there is in meat, I realized, well, it doesn't make sense to just be a vegetarian. I need to cut all animal products out. Why would I pay for some cruelty to some animals but not to others? You know, yeah. it doesn't make sense to buy dairy, yeah. which is at least as cruel and then the animals Mm -hmm. still get killed at a slaughterhouse and be against eating meat. So I thought I need to just do it all. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized I needed to be vegan. And I started working towards that. And soon later I was vegan and by far it's one of the best decisions, (laughs) if not the best decision I've ever made in my life. It's Uh been the most positive life enriching thing. I've saved so much water, so much pollution from Mm -hmm. happening, so many lives less have suffered Mm -hmm. and will be killed because of me that is the biggest thing for me i mean by far by far so and i'm still eating delicious incredible amazing (laughs) food the best food ever just the vegan versions Mm -hmm. of all my favorites chocolate burgers pastas pizzas (laughs) ice cream you name it Mm -hmm. everything's there just the cruelty free version the version that didn't involve kidnapping and bestiality and forced impregnations and all of these Mm -hmm. horrific, disgraceful things Mm -hmm. that we would never, ever condone if it was done to a dog and especially if it was done to a human. But as soon as as we're talking about pigs, cows, chickens and fish, Mm -hmm. the rules go out the window. Cruelty and violence towards these specific species is not only legal and standard behind Mm -hmm. every animal product, Mm -hmm. but it is celebrated, especially around Christmas. We have animal sacrifices around certain meal times throughout the year and I just couldn't be more grateful to be out of that death cult to be honest Mm -hmm. that's how I see it now yeah and it's interesting James you're saying how much you felt better once you went vegetarian then you went vegan I've been I was a vegetarian for I've been a vegetarian for 23 years and even just giving up meat and or I felt like a completely different person and mm-hmm. and I want to get into something in a, in a moment because for me, I was a vegetarian for many, many years, believing I was helping animals, not eating meat or eating, you know, poultry or fish. And then yeah. I actually did my research kind of like you were doing your research on, on animal products such as dairy or eggs. And I was shocked to find out what I was reading. And you actually mm-hmm. said in one of your speeches, if you're a vegetarian, you're not really an animal supporter, an animal lover. In order to, you know, you have to be a vegan in order to really be one. So share with us vegetarianism versus veganism. What is happening in the dairy industry that, you know, we need to eliminate over here? Okay, everything. 
the whole Everything. thing. But there's a big difference. I'll just explain the difference first before mm-hmm. veg- between vegetarian and vegan. A vegetarian is somebody who doesn't eat meat, which is great, a great mm-hmm. start. But if you're trying to have an ethical position against the oppression and enslavement of animals, mm-hmm. then vegetarian would just be one step. Cutting yeah. meat from your diet is just one part. Mm-hmm. So vegetarians, a lot of them do go vegetarian for the animals, but a lot of people aren't aware that there's just as much violence in dairy and eggs. So yeah. it really doesn't make sense to stay there. And mm-hmm. the, the least we should be doing as a society, the moral baseline of our civilizations mm-hmm. should be vegan because yeah. anything less than being vegan is causing mm-hmm. unnecessary and easily avoidable harm. Mm-hmm. And why, why would we want to do that if we don't have to? It, yeah. it makes no sense to eat any other mm-hmm. way. We should be eating the most, the most violent free way. And by yeah. far that's a plant-based diet. It also yeah. happens to be the healthiest and the best for the planet. Mm-hmm. So what happens in the dairy industry, first of all, for a cow to give milk or to be able to humans to take her milk, because she doesn't mm-hmm. actually give it. We mm-hmm. steal it from her body. Yeah. They have to have a pregnant cow or a mm-hmm. cow that's just given birth. So to do that, a human will shove their arm into the cow's anus and grab her cervix to maneuver that into the right position. Then they'll inject her vagina with bull semen. Mm-hmm. While she's res- restrained, obviously no consent can be given. Mm-hmm. So they shove their arm into her, they inject her vagina with bull semen, and they force a pregnancy upon this vulnerable female animal Mm -hmm. and then after nine months of being pregnant she gives birth Mm -hmm. and they separate the mothers from the babies they take her babies away almost immediately because they don't want the babies drinking the milk that was intended to make them grow yeah the baby boys are a waste product in the dairy industry they don't produce any milk so they're sent to the slaughterhouse at -hmm. the slaughterhouse these babies who are the most gentle beautiful animals you could imagine they are generally, for the most part, shot in the head with a bolt gun. It fires a bolt through their, their skull and pierces into their brain, which stuns them. Then they are usually shackled upside down by, by one of their legs and they have their throat cut open. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's the baby boys. The baby girls they have the same fate as their mother. They're forcibly impregnated. Her babies are taken from her. They hook her up to milking machines. Yeah, and then... They do that repeated for about five to seven years until she's so severely mm-hmm. exploited, yeah. basically, that yeah. she can't continue. She's so yeah. tired. She's so t- exhausted from this process over and over. Yeah. She can't go on anymore. Yeah. They send her to the slaughterhouse. Mm-hmm. As yeah, because, well, same one as the baby. Mm-hmm. And, and can I just tell you, the, yeah. worst, the worst view I've ever seen, a uh, mother cow who'd had her babies taken from her repeatedly over and over for years. That was her yeah. life. And then just being going through all this tragedy when she was down, when she couldn't go on any longer, and they're like, okay, she's done, send it, send it to be killed. Before they did that, b- between when she dropped and when they killed her, mm-hmm. the short space in between, they practiced the artificial insemination on her. They practiced it over and over yeah. and over again. Oh and God. then they killed her. And this is standard legal practice in the dairy industry, the same dairy that you buy at the supermarket, the same dairy that is right next to the soy milk and the almond milk and the coconut milk and the hazelnut milk and the hemp milk and all the plant-based milks Mm -hmm. that don't involve any of this violence. Mm -hmm. It's so easy just to move your hand a few centimeters or inches across and buy plant-based milk that didn't involve any murder victims. Yeah. And what is, you know, it's, it's just so shocking. I remember seeing the movie Cowspiracy and they were showing some of the videos of these cows that were kind of, like you said, for several years being kept pregnant nonstop because they can only produce milk as long as they're, they're you know, right after pregnancy and then the milk production stops and they have to be inseminated again to create new pregnancy, to, to keep the cycle going. And there's like no time in between for the cow to recover. So it's a constant cycle of pregnancy and, and being kind of like saying having the milk taken away and then being yeah. discarded, like literally being thrown in the trash after after years of doing that it's just absolutely absolutely horrendous yeah it, it's horrendous beyond beyond belief this yeah. is worse than any of the worst horror movies you've ever seen because this is real it happens every mm-hmm. single second of every single yeah. day almost every single person on the planet 
is participating in this, either directly killing the animals or mm-hmm. paying somebody to do this to the animals for us. Yeah. It's wrong. It's completely wrong. Just like slavery was, was wrong, mm-hmm. animal slavery is yeah. also wrong. Yeah. All the houses are wrong. They're bad, bad places. And they're the last place you would ever want to end up. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they should be the last place that we force anybody else to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like, you know, again, our society is so conditioned to to have animal products in their diet. And I actually want to go into busting some of these myths about being a vegan and i shared with you before this interview that my mother actually went a bit vegetarian more than 30 years ago it was like back in the 80s where no one was doing that and she kept yeah. getting calls she's like how are you surviving on on on, a, on, the, on that diet are you are you having any strength we're, we're, we're really worried about you are you are you going to be okay are you healthy are you going to be okay mm. and and it's actually quite the opposite it really and, is yeah isn't that interesting? It's, I, I, yeah. find, I find this, you know how I mentioned earlier that it's a, like a death cult that you yeah. leave? Because everyone's like, vegans are in a cult, but really mm-hmm. we're not the ones sacrificing animals. We're not the ones feasting on murder victims. Mm-hmm. We're not the ones claiming to be animal lovers while we pat a dog, while we eat a, a cow's ass yeah. or something that came out of a chicken's ass. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't do. And it's not just that. And here's what I was getting at. There's so many myths. In fact, a lot of doctors would tell you, you need to eat meat to be healthy. Yeah. You need dairy for calcium. Yes. Think, think about this for a second. Mm-hmm. How incredibly far off the mark are we mm-hmm. when the people that we look up to for health advice are giving us the very advice that could see us in a grave decades before our time? Mm-hmm. And it's the most obvious thing. Everybody should know how to eat healthy. But instead, what does everybody know? You get meat for protein. You get dairy for calcium. Animals are killed humanely. Fish don't feel pain. Free-range grass-fed is a really nice thing for animals, even Mm -hmm. though they all end up with a knife in their throat. Exactly. What about B12? Even though everybody should be supplementing B12, Mm -hmm. including meat eaters. And the only reason why a vegan diet can be deficient in it is because of the way we sanitize our foods these days Mm -hmm. they also believe things like god put animals here for us to kill as if a loving compassionate god would want us to wage a war against a billion sentient vulnerable innocent feeling emotional beings every single week a billion murders a week this is actually a lot more like hell Mm -hmm. than it is anything else Mm -hmm. and if you are lucky enough to be born a human Mm -hmm. or a dolphin or a dog or a whale, which are mostly pr- protected, mm-hmm. you're very lucky. If you happen to be a pig, cow, chicken, or fish, you are very, very unlucky, and your life mm-hmm. is going to look very similar to uh, a horrific horror movie. Yeah. Why do you believe that? Because, you know, I, I have a big community of vegan friends. Like, most of my friends are vegan. Yippee yay. But I still come across people who are so resistant to that concept or even ridiculing that concept and like you said you know it's the doctors telling you you have to eat meat for protein and and this for calcium but i mean so it's kind of like i feel like there is an indoctrination that is happening totally there is that is keeping people in that enslavement of eating animal flesh so go a little bit more into that that please. scares me yeah like who's telling all these lies who is Mm-hmm. You no, know, it's it's the dairy industry and the egg industry and the yeah. meat industry who are they have political power and influence. They have so much money. Mm-hmm. They are advertising everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, you think that vegans are brainwashed. You walk down a typical street and tell me how many advertisements you see for yeah. a fast food chain mm-hmm. for a mm-hmm. burger or for something similar yeah, the yeah. brainwashing is everywhere and then it's the happy advertisements where everyone's eating a burger or yeah. drinking yeah. you know some sort of yeah. milkshake and everyone's happy and lean bodies and mm-hmm. smiling they're the people who eat those foods they get their whole body cut open mm-hmm. and get their heart operated on because they're eating that kind of food so there is a lot of indoctrination there is a lot of lies and conditioning that so many people believe Mm-hmm. And that's what's so scary. I was in the health industry for nearly eight years mm-hmm. before I 
around the many health benefits of cutting animal products out from your diet. I can't believe it took me that long. That was one of the biggest shocks. Mm -hmm. And currently now, one of my biggest shocks is what you just mentioned, that you tell people this information and you share it with them. And it's so it's so logical and it's the conclusion is crystal clear. And people are still resistant and struggle to incorporate that information into their life. And it's because we have also been conditioned, like I said earlier, to mm -hmm. think that we need meat for a meal or we're not exactly. going to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, we have vegan meat now. We have vegan sausages and vegan mm -hmm. chicken and vegan everything. You could even eat the same meals you already do, but just get the vegan version, which is at most of the supermarkets that people listening yeah. to this will probably yeah. be at. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's there's so much of that, and there's so that's the beauty though of being vegan is that there's an answer to every single one of those objections. Mm -hmm. And although people do get defensive because you are challenging them on something mm -hmm. that most people believe, they believe that they're being animal lovers by buying free range murdered animals instead yeah. of ones that were trapped in a cage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that's maybe that's better for that mm -hmm. individual animal. It's it's case by case basis. Maybe it would have been better. Does that does letting them walk around before you kill them justify killing them? No. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. like if I kill a human, if I let them free range their whole life, yeah. it doesn't mean murder's okay. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't make sending them into a, a slaughterhouse mm -hmm. okay. You know, if we thought about this with humans, what we're doing inside slaughterhouses, mm -hmm. if we replace the humans with if we replace the animals mm -hmm. with humans, it's just like the Nazi death camps. It's the exact same thing, the production line. The, the killing from start to finish, the it, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And and so none of us would want to participate in that. Mm -hmm. None of us would pay someone to do that for us. Mm -hmm. But all we've done, all we've done is, is change the species just a little bit. They've still got eyes, they've still got ears, they've still got a heart, they've still got a brain, friends, family, they communicate, mm -hmm. they eat, they breathe, they sleep, they have everything in common with us, yeah. these other species, yeah. everything yeah. that matters. But just because they've got feathers... Mm -hmm. or scales or wings or fur mm -hmm. that's all we need to be like yeah. yep they're different enough mm -hmm. so let's use them and abuse them to our best advantage mm -hmm. and even if the advantage is simply because you like how their dead body tastes it's like well good enough let's mm -hmm. just do it anyway exactly almost, everyone, almost everyone's in on it and it's 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 scary when you're vegan and you wake up in this world and you see it a little bit differently and you walk down the meat section or the morgue section at your supermarket and you see these murder victims everywhere, things are real different. And then when you see otherwise good people participating in it by purchasing these products, which creates the demand for more of it, which will be supplied because of that choice, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's sad to see otherwise good people contributing to something so incredibly violent and unnecessary. Yeah. 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 It's a, a lot of work to do. It's a lot of work to do. I actually want to share something that was happening in Germany. I'm from Germany originally. And I was oh, just right. there visiting and one of my friends shared that with me. They did a TV segment on this where they actually took the animals out in a public square, in a public area. And for people who wanted to purchase them, he's like, okay, which chicken do you want? And they mm. actually killed the chicken right there in front of the people who were purchasing the chicken. Yeah. And people would come up and say, this is so cruel. How can you do that? Mm. But those were not vegans. Those were meat eaters. Yeah. So I felt, so what they were actually showing that as long as uh, the meat is packaged up at the supermarket in the boxes, it was fine to purchase it and eat it. But then mm. actually people witnessing how the animals were being killed and that the, the whole process that was involved, people were getting upset about witnessing that process and how can that be done in public and how can you do that in front of me so i feel like mm. there is an ingrained ignorance that we're like okay you know as long as we don't see it we don't have to think about it as long as we don't see it we don't have to we, we it's it's okay do you know what as well we shouldn't have to like it just shouldn't be legal in the yeah. first place this yeah. shouldn't be happening mm -hmm. consumers you know a lot of times we don't know where uh, mm -hmm. where things come from but isn't yeah. it incredibly interesting yeah. at, fair, at, at the least yeah. that none of us or majority of us, majority of people I've spoken to have never been inside a slaughterhouse, mm -hmm. have never actually seen an animal killed for them for their mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. A lot of people haven't actually seen that happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. I find that really interesting. 
And yeah, just just the whole idea that it is good people and that's a benefit, you know, those people who are outraged, mm-hmm. I mean, 99% of people would agree they're against animal cruelty Yeah. to the point where they would put their own safety on the line in order to help an animal who is being harmed. Mm-hmm. And later in the day, they buy a bacon cheeseburger yeah. and yeah. they've actually become the perpetrator of the mm-hmm. violence. Mm-hmm. But beauty, right? mm-hmm. so many people are good people. We're striving to become more ethical, you know, and there's, there's a lot of things that we'd all like to do something about Mm -hmm. that is just out of our power. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to stop a war somewhere. I don't know how to help the children in Syria. I don't know how to stop, you know, women being abused. You know, Mm -hmm. there's, there's little things we can do every day. Sure. But I think the, the important distinction is that to the best of my knowledge, none of those things are my fault. I'm, I'm not deliberately causing those things, but the war on, our fellow sentient beings mm-hmm. that are covered slightly differently than us, our, our family, they're our family, right? Because if you have a dog or a cat living with you, you know, and you, you, you that dog or cat lives with you for years and years, don't tell me that you don't see that dog or cat as family. Mm-hmm. We, see, we see our animals, yeah. our animal, yeah. animal companions as family. They are our family. They are mm-hmm. brothers and sisters, distant relatives, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it, but they are family. And for the most part, Anybody who saw one of our family members getting harmed, mm-hmm. we would be over there in a flash, put our own safety on the line. Later in the day, we do the wrong thing by becoming the oppressor. But when you can show people, hey, and, and here's the difference between being a vegan and being a vegan activist, okay? Mm-hmm. So you and your friend, this is before you go vegan, you yeah. and your friend, there's a dog. You're punching the dog in the face as hard as you can, both mm-hmm. of you are. Mm-hmm. And then one of the people has the epiphany and they go, hang on a second, my choice right now, maybe I'm getting some entertainment from it, okay, maybe I'm enjoying it, but my choice to punch this dog in the face right now, this dog doesn't like it Mm -hmm. and I don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. I could do something else. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to stop doing this and do something else because I don't want to cause unnecessary harm to this dog. Yeah. That's going vegan. Mm-hmm. You stop you stop contributing to the harm. Great. Mm-hmm. Very important. The least we should all do. The next thing we should do, though, your friend is still punching the dog. Don't just stand there. Yeah. Watch and condone that mm-hmm. by being complicit. Stand up for that dog like you would want to be stood up for and say whatever you got to say to get them to realise that their choice to enjoy themselves by punching that dog is not more important than that dog's right to be left alone. Mm-hmm. And that's being a vegan activist, standing up for that. Yeah, yeah. And we talked before the show about people going vegan because it's better for your health and yeah. people going vegan because it's just the right thing to do. Sure. Well, what we were talking about earlier was the difference between someone who's a plant on a plant-based diet and somebody who's a vegan. Mm-hmm. I just got off the cruise that I was speaking mm-hmm. on where there was 2,000 people mm-hmm. and the majority of them, I thought they're all going to be vegan, mm-hmm. but I keep sitting down with them for meals and I realize actually they're not vegan. They're on a plant-based diet. Right. They've had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. They've got diabetes. Wow. They're in some pain and they learn about a plant-based mm-hmm. diet, all the incredible benefits. And they, so they went on a plant-based diet. Yeah. And they kept telling me, yeah, I've been vegan for this long. And I'm like, oh, okay, so why'd you go vegan? And they kept saying because of my health or this and that. And that's where I realized, oh, okay, this is actually, you haven't actually gone vegan. Mm-hmm. Going vegan means you're, you're, you can see the oppression of these animals mm-hmm. and the killing and the slaughter and the cruelty and the confinement and all of it, the whole entire thing. Mm-hmm. You see it. Mm-hmm. And you agree that it's wrong. Yeah. That yeah. that's what being vegan is. So it's you don't eat them, you don't eat animals, you don't wear them, you don't use them for medical mm-hmm. testing. You believe that animal exploitation is wrong and you want to see all exploitation of these animals abolished. Mm-hmm. Abol- abolish it should be illegal. It should be it is completely wrong and it should be illegal. Mm-hmm. But that's being vegan. Yeah. But being on a plant-based diet just means you're eating the way that a mm-hmm. vegan eats. Mm-hmm. Which is Right too, because you're still going to be causing less harm. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, whatever you got to do to, to do it, I don't care. Who cares? Do it. It's so yeah. important that you do yeah. it. But don't everybody just get on a plant-based diet and forget about what we've done. 
and not mm-hmm. think about what we have done yeah. to other species and this war we have waged on them. Don't forget about it just because everyone's eating a plant-based diet. Mm-hmm. There's a very serious thing that's happening yeah. right now that has yeah. been happening for a long, long time, mm-hmm. and the violence needs to be addressed. Yeah, we need. To we need to see the error of our way so that we can grow from it and do better in the future. Otherwise, mm. it'll probably just manifest in some other way. Us discriminating discriminating against another race or another species or another whatever, you know, believing that we're important and they are and, mm-hmm. and humans, again, valuing us just because we're members of this species over everybody else who we share the planet with. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so interesting that you're saying that I actually became a vegetarian 23 years ago, James, and I became a vegetarian for health benefits. And it was interesting because I kept getting salmonella poisoning, viruses from chicken meat and all these health challenges. And I was finally saying, I think this is the universe giving me a sign to stop eating animal flesh. And it was easy because my mom had been a vegetarian for seven years at that time. But it was not. But I became a vegan because of what you just shared with me. I read a book many years ago called Peace Food by a guy named Dr. Rudiger Dahlke, and he talked about, you know, of course, the physical benefits of becoming a vegan and having a plant-based diet, but he talks about the animal cruelty that you've been talking about. It's actually interesting, you know, how it was that aspect that I was experiencing or witnessing or learning about that actually turned me from being a vegetarian into a vegan. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't have stuck with a plant-based diet for very mm-hmm. long mm-hmm. if that wasn't an ethical yeah. consideration because that's what's kept me sticking with it. Mm-hmm. I would have gone vegetarian for a long time. Okay, that was fun, but mm-hmm. you know, I miss meat. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have yeah. a steak or have some mm-hmm. ribs or something like that. But when it became about something more than me, mm-hmm. it was so. I was just like, boom. Okay, that's it. I mean, it still mm-hmm. took a little while, yeah. but yeah. then I had a day where I said, from this day on, that's it. I'm mm-hmm. vegan now. I'm never mm-hmm. going back. I'm never supporting that <laughs> yeah. again deliberately. Yeah. And, yeah. And it was a, it was a, it was a very specific point, which I think is actually helpful for people to do. Mm-hmm. If you are considering going mm-hmm. vegan, feel like you want to, you know, live more ethically, create less harm by your choices and do wonders for your health as well. I think setting a date, you know, and working towards it or do, you could do it overnight. But if you just say mm-hmm. from this day on, that's when I'm going to be vegan from, and that might be three weeks from now, where in those three weeks, you choose a few recipes for breakfast, a few for lunch, a few mm-hmm. for dinner, mm-hmm. boom, you've got it covered. When your toothpaste runs out, buy one that is not being tested on animals. Just mm-hmm. Google vegan toothpaste in whatever your supermarket is mm-hmm. that you shop at already and you'll get it. Yeah. And just don't visit places like SeaWorld. Do something mm-hmm. more, mm-hmm. you know, fun yeah. that's not yeah. at the expense of others. Mm-hmm. There's so many activities that you could do. You could go snorkeling instead of going fishing, for example. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. there, there's countless different ways that we can just make better choices. Yeah. But the I, easiest one is the food. The easiest, the easiest one, one is the food. It is because that's the you do that three times a day and that mm-hmm. means you're harming mm-hmm. in a big way three times mm-hmm. a day. Yeah. And yeah, it's just the it's the most far re- far reaching choice you could make is yeah. becoming vegan, changing mm-hmm. changing mm-hmm. from who you eat to what you eat. Eat mm-hmm. things, not eat beings. Mm-hmm. You mentioned something earlier. It's like, you know, we have we're facing all these challenges in the world from people being killed in Syria to yeah. human trafficking and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, here's my question. If yeah. we become vegan, the, the way you're describing a vegan, not just going on a plant-based diet, but actually doing it because we are f- choosing to be compassionate to all living beings on this planet. Do you believe practicing that compassion to living beings will be able to affect the state of the world? 100% of course it will. It's... It, it, imagine how much easier it is going to be to respect each other when we get to the point where we don't even eat honey anymore because we want to respect the little bees, and that's mm-hmm. where vegans are at. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can, if you can see the sameness in a bee or in a mm-hmm. cow or a pig or a mm-hmm. chicken or a fish, if you can see them, you inside them, like the same characteristics that matter, yeah. wanting to live, not wanting to die. Basically, mm-hmm. if, we, if we grill it right down. Mm-hmm. If you can find that in another species, how much easier is it going to be to respect each other? Someone who yeah. might just look a different color of their skin mm-hmm. or someone who's 
face is shaped a little bit differently, Mm -hmm. you know, a different race or whatever, it's going to be so much easier to respect each other. And we right now have slaughterhouses around. The slaughterhouse workers, the places, the surrounding areas of slaughterhouses have higher incidents of violent crime and drug use and suicide and all Mm -hmm. kinds of things. So it's Mm -hmm. it's better for the humans there as well. Um, There's... Yeah, I mean, there's countless reasons. I, actually, I can't remember what I was saying then. I had something I wanted to say about that. What did you What did you start me on? How can we create a more compassionate world by being right. compassionate to animals? So we cut out the violence happening to the animals. Mm-hmm. We also don't employ people to do such a brutal job of killing mm-hmm. over and over mm-hmm. and over and over and over again every single day. These jobs have the highest rates of um, injuries as well, mm-hmm. and also the highest rate of worker turnover. Because people mm-hmm. don't want to do, they don't want to kill for a living. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't be putting ex-convicts or anyone in mm-hmm. there, or low socioeconomic people, into a job like this. Mm-hmm. We should this shouldn't be a job where we're creating killers. Um, and and then just when we're not consuming the product of mm-hmm. torture and violence, because mm-hmm. that is literally what we consume, and we create yeah. our bodies with that. Mm-hmm in the air as well you know if you are having a happy conversation with somebody and they walk into the room someone walks into the room you'll feel the good vibe if you're having a negative conversation someone's walking in they'll feel a bad vibe Mm -hmm. if you think about this world and a billion murders every week guarantee there's some pretty heavy energies Mm -hmm. floating around you know energy is a very real thing and the energy of this world when there's so much violence happening constantly that's completely avoidable I, I strongly believe that we'll feel a big shift in a way that we aren't even expecting to feel mm-hmm. as well. And obviously that's speculation, but I just feel like when we're growing our body through foods of life and not foods of death and when mm-hmm. people are having less violent roles to play in society and, and yeah, I just, yeah. I mean, countless benefits, countless yeah. benefits. Teaching a child, I, I was just out at the beach just then, Mm-hmm. Teaching a child how to fish, how to hunt might seem like a wholesome activity because you don't hear the fish screaming, mm-hmm. but it's not. It's, it's suffocating an animal to death. Could be someone's mother, could mm-hmm. be someone's son. You know, yeah. they're, they've got families too. And, and so it, it'll end all that as well this idea of teaching kids pat these animals and put hooks through the mouths of these animals and all this mm-hmm. confusion about who we can be violent towards and hurt and who we can't. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's a confusing message for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. I think there's a lot of ways that will change the world, to be honest, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Oh, you do, and you just mentioned something so beautiful. I've, I've been producing a documentary series about the, the rainbow and the indigo children, and our tagline is changing the world by changing the way we raise our children. So what you just said, it just so deeply resonates with me because if we can teach children to be compassionate to all animals, not just to their dog or cat or the little rabbit but that they have, but to all animals, yeah. how would the world change 5, 10, 20 years down the road if these kids were learning it from the day they, they were born, the day they learned to walk? I mean, how incredible is that? Yeah, it would be very special. And, um, you know, that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing a lot of children who are vegan have been raised vegan since birth you can't even get their head around the idea that someone want to kill one of their friends and eat mm-hmm. them yeah you know and, and, and good it shouldn't be normal it shouldn't be this normal thing exactly doing. and yeah i think we're seeing a pretty special we're in in the start of a pretty special time mm-hmm. where you know so many more vegan kids and people who've had that kind of mindset that all beings deserve to be respected not just some Having that mindset since birth, it will see a really special generation of of adults one day. Yeah. Now for our Rebel Hearts audience, what has been your biggest challenge becoming vegan? Because you pretty much went cold turkey. Um, I didn't. I didn't actually go cold turkey. I stopped eating meat overnight and Mm -hmm. then I knew I needed to go vegan, but I was eating a lot of ice cream, which I was struggling with. Okay. I actually didn't realize that you know, like how so many vegetarians think they could never give up cheese. Mm -hmm. A big part of that is because there's casomorphins in Mm -hmm. the dairy which Mm -hmm. act like similar to morphine and they're very addictive Mm -hmm. and they make people very addicted to dairy because they want the the baby cow Mm -hmm. 
Cat, nature has played it so that the baby cows want to keep going back to their mum, and mm-hmm. so it has like an opiate effect. Oh, okay. People actually are addicted to dairy, mm-hmm. and that's why they can never, they can't even imagine a salad without cheese, mm-hmm. a, a, a burger without cheese. Everything mm-hmm. has cheese. Cheese mm-hmm. on all of it, and then add yeah. more cheese. Yeah. It's a serious, serious addiction. Mm-hmm. And there's so much plant-based cheese out there these days. So it's just much delicious. Good cheese. <laughs> we just got this delicious mozzarella, and it. It's the bomb. It's the second <laughs> bomb in the last three days. It's so good. You get cream cheese, sour sour uh-huh. cream, all, all the dairy products. So for me, it was hard to give up mm-hmm. dairy. Then I, mm-hmm. I, I ate a lot of ice cream, but then I learned that if you just freeze a few bananas mm-hmm. and blend it up with some um, a bit of soy milk, mm-hmm. that's it. That's all you got to do. Frozen yeah. bananas blended with soy milk and you make delicious ice cream. It's so good. So I learned that recipe and then it was a lot easier for me. And I, I to do it, I just, you know, if I wanted to eat something, I just mm-hmm. put the word vegan in front of it when I looked mm-hmm. up the recipe on Google. Mm-hmm. If I went to a Mexican restaurant, I'd get the black beans in, instead of the yeah. minced minced mm-hmm. beef, minced yeah. cow. Yeah. If I if I wanted sour cream, instead I'd just get guacamole. And mm-hmm. it was still delicious. Yeah. And I felt better after it and no one had to die. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's not like I stopped eating burritos. I just slightly change them i still went to the same mexican place i already go to mm-hmm. and just changed my order so ever slightly yeah, and yeah. saved lives Same doing thing. that mm-hmm. you know, how else can you do that yeah yeah it's pretty special so i just i just cho- chose some recipes for breakfast i've got a pancake recipe which is just blended oats and banana and soy milk and if you pour that as a pancake mm-hmm. mixture you get delicious pancakes mm-hmm. my smoothies i have oats with berries and with mm-hmm. maple syrup Lunches, I have vegan burgers, I have pastas, um, curries, rice paper rolls, sushi with avocado mm-hmm. and tofu, you name it. Yeah. So oh it, it's actually really easy. And there's a website called challenge22.com, which mm-hmm. will get you a, a mentor and be part of a program where you get a 22 day vegan experience all for free. You don't have to pay a cent. Or veganeasy.org, which mm-hmm. is the 30 day vegan challenge, which you can try. There's lots of ways. There's, yeah. there's so many websites and people dedicated to helping you go vegan. Mm-hmm. It's honestly never been easier. And you just do it. You just make a start, take the first step, sign up to one of these <laughs> things, start working on it. And you'll see how much easier it is than you were expecting. Mm-hmm. And how much more infinitely rewarding you were expecting as well. Yeah. Oh, amazing thank you thank you for these websites and and these tips and honestly i've been making the best vegan mac and cheese and i need to get the other recipe for my friend j row it's amazing yeah. i get i got my trainer hooked on that he's been eating vegan mac and cheese ever since that day it's awesome so that's i'll get cool. that to you after the that, show that's what we had for breakfast this morning uh-huh you know like we're not eating twigs and berries and lettuce uh-huh. leaves we're eating mac <laughs> i know and right <laughs> That's what we're having. Passing these myths, the best ice creams, plant bears. It's 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 amazing. It's, so, it's a- yeah, it's amazing. So, what you know, as we're getting close to the end of the show, what has been your biggest joy, your biggest inspiration, being on the path that you have been on for the past years? Probably the, the one of the biggest joys was when I spoke for the first time after not speaking for a whole year. Mm-hmm. And that was on um, Australian television, a live morning morning news show. Mm-hmm. And the words I chose, they were a very heartfelt plea for people to realise that the violence they were contributing to by consuming animal products mm-hmm. was unnecessary mm-hmm. and avoidable and to please become vegan. Yeah. I was speaking. I spoke from the heart and mm-hmm. I reached millions and millions of people mm-hmm. through that. That was a huge highlight for me. And then mm-hmm. the second biggest highlight was when one of my mm-hmm. speeches went viral. It was seen by about 13 million people Amazing. and it inspired so much change. Mm-hmm. So I, that was the biggest highlight for me. Just mm-hmm. you know, I get messages every day from people, but in, in, you know, the few weeks when that speech of mine went viral, I just can't tell you how many people reached out telling me that they changed. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, that's what it's all about for me. So that by far was the biggest um, highlight so far Mm -hmm. because that's when I felt like I'd done a really good job and, you know, that my actions, the ripple effect Mm -hmm. was actually making a difference 
And we all do. Like that's all of us. You know, someone inspired me Mm -hmm. and a million other people. I I have inspired I don't know how many people and some of them are going to inspire tens of millions of people as well. And just about like doing your part and speaking your truth Mm -hmm. and coming from a place of love and compassion Mm -hmm. and trying to lift each other up so mm-hmm. that we can all become better and teach yeah. each other and learn from each other and make this world more peaceful and more respectful and help mm-hmm. ev- everyone's voice be heard and be understood regardless of species. Mm-hmm. You're already as starting to answer my next question. My next question is, James, what is your vision for the world? What are you visualizing is possible for us to create? I should think more about this because it's. I think it's really important to be hopeful of the world that you want to see. Mm-hmm. But I, I want every cage empty. I don't want anyone to be owned, to be the property mm-hmm. of anyone else. Mm-hmm. That's right. I don't believe anyone should suffer at the hands of somebody else. Mm-hmm. All beings should be free, should be liberated from their shackles and should be given an opportunity to live a happy life enjoyable life and just all of us giving them the best opportunity we can to do that by making better environmental choices by making better food choices um Mm -hmm. oh yeah also stop breeding the animals that we use for pets you know we shouldn't be breeding them into existence either let's save all the ones that are here now yeah. And and that's just in general. Stop breeding the animals in general. But to do that, we need to stop mm-hmm. creating the demand for them. So I guess I just see a world where, you know, we're kinder to each other mm-hmm. and and we value the biggest elephant and the smallest ants. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean getting silly, but just the practical things we can do to reduce harm we do them and it's a priority in our life and that's what we learn from a young age mm-hmm. how to respect and how to treat others with kindness and how to tread lightly on this earth mm-hmm. that's what i hope happens what will happen i don't know that depends on all of us it could be a very very bad future that we're in store for and i hate to say it but it's also really possible that it'll get to a point where things are so bad that we have to change and that'll be the reason Mm -hmm. why we do rather than realizing ahead of time, oh, we could change now and avoid a whole lot of Mm -hmm. bad things. I hope it doesn't get to the point where we we have no choice anymore and it's just by Mm -hmm. necessity, but who knows? Yeah, yeah. So this is my my little manifestation over here let's hold that vision of what you just said that we are we're moving right into that before things have to go worse before we can that we don't have to go down before we can go up yeah that would be great we're already very far down and it doesn't Mm -hmm. feel like it for a lot of us because Mm -hmm. we're comfortably living in our houses or wherever we're living Mm -hmm. a lot of us are very comfortable we're 0.001 percent of the beings on this planet and there are Mm -hmm. Over 76 billion land animals killed every year and nearly 3 trillion sea animals killed every year. So there's so many individuals. Don't look at, don't don't think your life, if you're living pretty good, is a representation of what the majority of earthlings are going through. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Be be grateful for what you've got and use your privilege and opportunity to help others out of their suffering. Mm Mm-hmm. I think you're telepathic, James. I want to ask you a question you're already starting to answer. That's amazing. <laughs> because my, cool. my, we're, we're about to wrap up over here. I just got my last few minutes signal from my amazing friend Jarvis over here who's running the switchboard and putting up all these cool images that you're seeing a lot during yeah, the thanks, show. Jarvis. They were great images. Well done. <laughs> really good. So my, my final question for you, James, is what is your message to the Rebel Hearts audience? It's to treat others the way that you would want to be treated, to speak up against injustice when you witness it, Mm -hmm. to not worry about what other people think as Mm -hmm. best you can, Mm -hmm. to be courageous in being a warrior of the light and do what you feel is best, you know, follow your own path. People are going to tell you to walk this way and that way. 
follow your own path. That means listen to what's inside. And sometimes you need to take space or time to quieten the mind down so you can hear what your path is. So take the time to do that, respect yourself. And the more that you do that, the easier it'll be to respect others. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank and you. if you're not already vegan, go vegan good. ASAP. Yes. Go vegan. <laughs> you're probably a very good person. You're doing a very, very, very cruel thing by not being vegan. No hate, just saying, because I was there too. And I'm just telling you because I know how much benefit it has given me, just personally, apart from all the animals. I feel so much better. I've spoken to thousands of thousands of vegans who feel exactly the same. And it's a gift we're trying to share for for countless reasons. So the, at the very least, give us some serious thought, look into it, read a bit more about it, mm -hmm. watch the documentary Earthlings, Cowspiracy, or Forks Over Knives and get inspired to make probably one of the greatest changes you'll ever make in your life well thank you that i feel like this is the perfect final message thank you so much for what you just shared with us and what you've been sharing with us and for our rebel hearts audience how can they find out more about what you're up to or learn about more about you what is the best way to be in touch with you i post most days on facebook instagram or youtube mm -hmm. and so you can always see what I'm doing there. You can email me if you want at peace at jamesaspie.com.au. Perfect. Thank you so much. Cool. James, thank you so much for being on the show and taking the time to chat with us and, and get the information to our Rebel Hearts audience out here. Thank you for My all pleasure. the incredible... Thank you yeah, thank you. Thank you for all the incredible work you're doing and raising awareness for mm. and giving the voice to the voiceless. Yeah, happy to do it. I'm so glad to be fighting such a good fight. And you said it right at the start. It's about shining the light on the darkness. It all happens behind closed doors for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that we shine light on this very dark thing that's happening in our world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much for doing that. All right, Rebel Hearts. That was it for today, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And I hope you are inspired. If you're not vegan, do what James just said. Educate yourself. See how you can change your diet. Move into a plant-based diet and help us illuminate what is going on behind closed doors so we can actually, again, move forward by be inspiring others and inspiring you to become the change that you want to see in the world. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks at 3 o'clock PST. And remember, in the meantime, to rebel on. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life. From Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com.